And we are back, welcome to my camera settings and controller settings video where I try and explain what I believe is the best way to run your game. And at the end of this video, I'm also gonna show you a couple of neat tricks you can do with the game settings to help you get more points in squad battles. Now, I will start with the camera settings because I believe that that is the most important part of playing this game. And I'm gonna tell you something that not a lot of other content creators are going to tell you. Oh, really? Changing your camera settings will make you play worse. What? Now, obviously, I don't mean keep your current camera settings. If you're struggling with the current camera setup that you've got, by all means, take the advice I'm about to give you because you will become a better player over time. However, that is the key factor. It is over time. Whatever camera settings you currently use are the camera settings that you are used to. So by changing them to something else, you will inevitably initially start playing worse. What I will tell you is that because this is the start of a brand new game the, and of course the start of a brand new game cycle in terms of Ultimate Team or whatever game modes it is you're playing inside the AFC, now is the right time to change your camera angle because before anything starts getting too serious, you will have that adjustment period to change to your new camera settings. And me personally, I'm actually in the middle of that process as well. If I show you my screen right now, you'll see that my setup is on telebroadcast. That is what I believe is the best camera to play EAFC on. I have always been someone that has played on telly, but as you can see, the camera does shift slightly and it just gives you a little bit more insight into the overall play. So I am gonna be playing on telebroadcast this year. I am in the middle of that adjustment period myself. And I will admittedly say that right now, I am not playing as well as I was at the end of FIFA. However, I can already tell the places where I'm already starting to improve where I was struggling before. So I'm hoping that by the time the champs comes around, I'm going to be playing as a better player than I was than when I used to play on telly. The other camera setting that I would suggest if you don't want to play on telly broadcast would be the co-op camera. Now, the reason I think telly broadcast is better than co-op is because as much as co-op shows you all of the pitch and makes you a much better attacker in terms of passing and seeing where your players are making runs. I think firstly, it's a lot harder to defend. And I also think it's a lot harder to do skills because you're simply so far away from the play. It's almost at times very difficult to actually judge when your player needs to make the timings, especially on those tackles and those little skills to get out of corners. So for me personally, I would recommend telebroadcast. However, if you are someone that is confident to play on a much wider camera angle, then by all means go for co-op. But like I say, I'm someone that relies very heavily on manual defending over AI defending. So for me, telebroadcast or tele is necessary so I know I can time those tackles absolutely perfectly. From there, it just sort of comes down to your own personal preferences. In terms of the height and the zoom, this is just my setup to go for seven height, nine zoom. Obviously, like I say, these things you can adjust for yourselves. It's just the overall camera setup itself that I think you should be looking at. In terms of the far side focus, this obviously helps you adjust to those things I was just speaking about when it comes to co-op. If you go for the far side focus all the way at 20, then you are gonna track the ball all the way to the other side of the pitch, which could end up being very helpful. However, I feel that on 20, it does move that little bit too far. Ball tracking speed set to none, all the rest set to default. And of course, unless you really are someone who wants to make fancy clips for like TikTok and YouTube shorts, turn the power shot zoom off because it is such a massive distraction, both when you're trying to score a shot or especially when you're trying to defend against someone else's. Other things to note in terms of visuals, I prefer to have the player name and the indicator on so you can see the player's name in game and the power at the bottom of the pitch. Obviously going for the player name over anything else so you know who your opponent is controlling and who you're controlling. All the other things I have set to default. I have the player style thing turned off because I just don't want that blocking my vision. Next player switch indicator. Now I know some people like to have that off but I always like to know who I'm gonna switch to because then I can then complain when I don't have that happen. Time and score, obviously I have all of these things on. The precision visuals are an interesting one. At the moment, I have them on. I've not been using precision passing too much, but it is nice to know where that ball is going to go when you use it. But again, I can understand you wanting to turn it off if you don't like seeing that much stuff come up on your screen. And finally, for the radar, I recommend using 2D. As much as it is cool to see the ball sort of traveling over your heads on the 3D radar, it's just a little bit extra where you can just focus on that 2D radar so you can see where all the movements are being made. Obviously, if you're playing on co-op, you don't even need a radar at all. I'd probably recommend just turning it off if you're playing on co-op. But for me, I have the radar on 2D. 
And finally, I have the scrolling lineups off because at the start of games, I don't want things like that ruining my vision at the bottom of the screen. That is it in terms of my visuals and my camera settings. Let's move on to my controller settings. Okay, let's go. Now, firstly, before anything, it is important to have your actual gameplay set up as competitive because that means when you're playing in offline game mode, such as squad battles or just in any other game mode, it is set to the style of play that it would be if you're playing online in whatever game mode it may be. Like I say, whether that's Ultimate Team, Pro Clubs, Volta, whatever. If it's on competitive, that is what it is like when it is online to make sure your setup is on competitive. That then takes care of all of these sort of things. Time finishing, I think, is important to have on. All the other things, I think the most important ones are having the pass receiver set to late i.e. your players are moving for as much time as possible before the ball is received. You don't get situations where they just keep running after a ball has been played so they can get intercepted. Precision pass sensitivity, like I say, I have all those things at normal for the moment. I don't think there is any reason to change that right now. In terms of the defending styles, I know a lot of people are moving towards the advanced defending setup, but from what I've experienced, it's not quite fully functioning yet. And now, now I don't know if a lot of you have really picked up on it yet, but the referees have been giving a lot more red cards Certainly in online matches when it comes to like these shoulder to shoulder tackles. And if you're going for shoulder to shoulder tackles all the time using advanced defending, I genuinely think you're at a massive risk of conceding penalties and red cards. So for me, I think tactical defending is the right way to go. And also I have my button bindings changed slightly. So for me, advanced defending doesn't quite work at the moment. And I will show you those bindings now. So as you can see, I have my setup on custom A. Now, when it comes to attacking, I actually keep everything the same. I've never had any complaints about the attacking setup on any FIFA or EAFC game. In terms of defending, though, that is where things are different. Now, I have changed tackle to A from B, and then I have changed teammate contain from right bumper to B as well. Now, the reason I have done this is firstly in terms of the tackling. Have you ever been in those one-on-one -on -one situations where you're fighting for the ball with the defender and you're spamming tackle. And what happens is your player actually gets there first and then just boots it out for a throw-in and it's not like you've not won the ball at all. Sorry. That is why I changed it to A because that now means that when I do get in those situations, rather than booting the ball clear, I'm then passing it either back to the goalkeeper or passing it to someone in midfield. And I can just keep the ball by using A as my main stand tackle button. From there, the reason I then changed teammate contain from right bumper to B is because then I can just hold down the B button to do the teammate contain and then pick my moments to tackle by pushing the A button. And it also allows me when I am jockeying defending that by holding the controller like this, I can sprint with the right trigger, contain with the right bumper and then jockey with the left trigger as well. I can do all of this at the same time, allowing me to perfectly stay in position and stay in my shape when I'm trying to win the ball back. And then I can just push A to win the tackle. So those are my changes that I have to controller settings. I would thoroughly recommend using this. It's certainly made manual defending much easier for me because I still think manual defending is a lot more important than AI defending. I know other people would disagree with that, but that is how I have my controller settings. And yeah, give them a go. Let me know in the comments how they figure out for you. And now finally, a few extra tips that you can change in the game settings to help you get more points on squad battles. Firstly, set competitor mode off and turn player-based difficulty off. The last thing you want is the AI to be pulling out even more tricks and styles of play than what you're normally used to. Just don't make it harder for yourself. Turn competitor mode and player-based AI difficulty off. Also, set your game speed to fast-paced. It just means that everything moves around the pitch quicker. Now, granted, in regards to actually playing online, you may then notice a slight disparity in terms of the game speed, but having fast-paced on squad battles really helps the game flow quicker and just gives you more opportunities to score points. From there, we move over to the rules section. Now, a couple of these I did try as an experiment, which didn't work, which were, of course, having offsides off and bookings off. No matter what you do, bookings and offsides will always be on. So you can't do anything about that. However, since I changed injuries to off, I have not had a single injury in squad battle. So let me know if that one is working. What I can tell you is that referee strictness being set to lenient has been working. I have literally done last man slide tackles and only been booked for them. And just your generic yellow cards have not been happening. So that is going to save you some key points on yellow cards, especially if it's like the last minute of the game and the AI is trying to cheese you for a goal, which I know happens so often on squad battles. With a lenient ref, you can hack them down and only get a yellow card rather than a red card. And of course, you keep your clean sheet. The final and most important one, in my opinion, is handballs being on. Now, I know that that is going to 
throw some alarm bells up for some people because yes, as good as this is for you, it can work against you. And I cannot promise you that by having handballs on, you're not going to concede penalties yourself. However, if you are semi-decent at defending, you should be able to avoid handballs happening against you. What you can then do is force so many situations where handballs can happen for you. Now, now I would advise you just start spamming power shots from a decent range and you'll get a lot of free kicks from AI blocks on the edge of the area. From there, you can either score the free kick or try and set up maybe another handball by shooting the free kick into the player with the block. You can, of course, get penalties from just doing those power shots from range. But more importantly, when you do those power shots, what's going to more than likely happen is you get a corner. And the reason why that is important is on your screen here. You'll see that I've got two separate squads for my Road to Glory. I have my normal RTG team and then I have my Squad Battle RTG team. Everything about both squads is exactly the same. However, if I go into the custom tactics, you will see that on all of my actual playable formations, I have changed my corners and free kicks to maximum number of players in the box. And that is purely to generate handballs. By having that many people in the box, just by whipping in those corners at the big players, with that much chaos going on in there, handballs happen almost every single game. Worst case scenario, the ball gets headed out to the edge of the box again, where you'll yet again have someone coming in on it, you smash one of those long shots with that many players in the box, a handball's going to come and you're going to get loads of penalties. And from there, you are going to find getting five goals in these four-minute squad battles so, so much easier. Thank you very much for watching today's video. Hopefully, you can test out some of these things for yourself. And let me know down in the comments how successful any of those were for you. And I will start bringing you some tactics videos over the course of the next few weeks once I've figured out what I think is the best play styles on EAFC. Thank you very much for watching once again. I will see you very, very soon.